Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Josh. And it's really depressing to see so many homeless people on the side of the road, and I just wanted to kind of address that for a second. I mean, it's getting worse and worse, and it leads me to wonder if these people really, a lot of them really need help, obviously, but how many of them are out there just to supplement uh, income, which is a small percentage, and how many are out there because they're too lazy to do anything with their lives? And a uh, guy at work and I were talking about this today because, you know, I spent like an hour getting home in traffic and I have to sit there in the on-ramps. The on-ramp I was on today, I passed one, two, three, four, five, okay, four, I think there was, okay, five homeless people with signs on one on-ramp. And then there was four kids separate from that with some lady doing like a fundraiser. Like a fundraiser on a freeway on-ramp, and it's like all dry, and the grass is all fucked. I was like, okay, so, you know, the first person, I I, I, I bring a cooler full of soda to work, and so on my way home, I, I, I actually get out of my truck at, like, you know, when I'm sitting and stuck in traffic, I'll get out, throw a few in the front seat, and I actually hand them out the window to the homeless people. And if I have money, I'll get my buck each. And that's just how I am, you know, it's not like I do it because I feel like I'm obligated. But I do like to acknowledge them, you know, and a lot of people won't even say anything, just stare straight ahead and ignore them. And I think that's pretty messed up. You know, they're people too. It doesn't matter what, you know, uh, what their situation may be. They're standing out there begging for money. So, you know. So, there are homeless people that are obviously in need of money. But then there are these ones. And, and this guy and I were talking about this at work today. Uh, the punks. And, you know... I don't know what it's like in other places. I know that cultures vary in different cities. But in Portland, they call themselves punks, I guess. But uh, these are the folks that wear the most raggedy possible clothes that you could imagine and um, pride themselves on it. You know, the ones with the haggard sweaters that have like all the patches on them that are filthy and uh, all the tons of piercings. And look, I'm not judgmental. People can live however they want. And, and But uh, a lot of these guys have a chip on their shoulder, you know, they'll set up their blankets and all their crap and they'll have dogs. It's like you don't have a right to have a dog if you can't afford to feed yourself, you know, and they often look, un, uh, you know, malnourished and, uh, you know, that's not right. But, uh, you know, they sit out there on the sidewalks and they make people feel shitty when they go by. And a lot of times, you know, I, I know how these people think. I've hung out with them and shit, you know, and, and it's like... They'll, they'll diss on people because they're wearing, uh, you know, some designer clothes or something. But these guys wouldn't be caught dead wearing a polo shirt, you know. They're trendies. They're trendy people in their own way. But the thing is, they've chosen a trend of being a slob often. And, and, and what bothers me is that uh, they're begging for money as if they need it. And these people are often very intelligent, very capable people who are properly educated and could go out and get off their ass and do something. And uh, what it is, is it's a lack of appreciation. A lack of appreciation for what's available for us. And I know that as a society, we like to complain often about, you know, the issues that we face. And I've got to say, there's a lot of adversity and a lot of people that, that do need help. And, and uh, I never overlook that. I have a lot of empathy for people who are handicapped or illiterate. I mean, even the folks that I, I mean, I know folks that just can't read, that just can't focus long enough to read something. I mean, that must be frustrating too. I mean, if you have to learn, you know, and I'm fortunate enough to be able, I'm very book smart as far as being able to pick up a book, focus on it, and learn what I need to learn. And I don't take that for granted. So it leaves a lot of these homeless people out there with, you know, n incapable of doing things for themselves. Take the bag lady, for instance, that's walking up the street with her cart, and she's talking to herself and going, wah, wah, wah. she's got a cat in there, maybe, a cat lady. And people just kind of laugh and snicker. You know, it, it breaks my heart, you know? It breaks my heart to see people that really need help, that can't even ask for help, that are too mentally uh, incapable of asking for help, while the others that are very intelligent um, almost have a sociopathic attitude about their innate... Uh, um, what is it, entitlement to get free shit. 
and uh, you know this extends to welfare, food stamps, all kinds of stuff. I mean, people take advantage of the system. You know, there are times when I haven't been able to afford a damn thing, I'm struggling with the calculator at Winco to get food. But I never went as far as to put myself on welfare or food stamps or anything because I know I can pull myself out of it. And so for the folks that don't and can't, there's nothing wrong with us helping them with social programs. It's the ones that take advantage. You know, but with the homeless, it's like these people can take advantage of programs and they choose not to. And they can also take advantage of the soup kitchen. I worked at a soup kitchen down there on com in community service. So there's this guy begging for, you know, saying, I'm hungry. A fat guy on the corner saying, I'm hungry. Well, the soup kitchen I know is a mile down the street and they're serving food in a half hour. That kind of stuff is like, okay, I know, you know, the homeless community, I know them. I've talked to them. They're cool people. They're well aware that the food's available. And I've asked them straight out, and they'll say, well, these guys are too stubborn. They won't come in. And, uh, you know, I guess they need help too. But, you know, it makes it really hard for us to know who really does need the help. Because I want to help people that are homeless. I want to help them get on their feet. Sometimes I want to stop and pull over and just talk to someone and be like, hey, you know, what's your story? You know, what's your situation? Um, but some people get really personal with their signs and, and try to really make people feel uh, bad and the whole God bless thing, you know, it's just a universal deal, you know. Homeless, out of work, disabled, you know. But I'll give them a couple bucks and if they're grateful, then I'll do it again. Sometimes you give them something and they just, you know, or if you say hi, they'll just be like, ignore you unless you give them something. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. I guess I'm just kind of venting, you know, about the idea that so many people are homeless and it seems that the, well, it doesn't seem, the numbers have quadrupled in the last five years and where I live. And uh, it makes me wonder if it really is the situation's that grim. I mean, what are we headed for? I mean, are we all going to be on the corner? What do we do, you know? I think in the end, we hit the breaking point, the 51%, where enough people are, uh, I guess enough people are uh, fed up with it to where the system collapses and the dollar collapses, and then giving people money won't do a damn bit of good. You know, we're not too far behind uh, Zimbabwe, trillion dollar bills for buying bread, but, uh, yeah, look it up, it's true. Trillion dollar bills. Crazy. Um, there, there's a lot to be said about how many people are out there begging, I guess, but, I don't know, it's hard to sort through the, you know, the different ones. The punkers, they need to get their shit together, <laughs> at least a lot of them. I've never seen one of the punkers that was really, they, they are, they're all good-looking kids, you know, guys and girls, and they can get their shit together and do it, but they, they're in a clique. A click that we just want to beg and ask for things for free. That we just want to be entitled to everything that society has and to, to sleep and do what we want, where we want. And, um, you know, I grew up with a lot of the hippie types that would say, you know, I want to, uh, you know, I don't want to have anything to do with Babylon. You know, Babylon was the big term, you know, because I went to a lot of Grateful Dead shows and, <coughs> excuse me, we all had long hair and the hippie necklaces and tie dyes. Babylon was the term for society, you know. I'm not going to be part of society, man. I'm going to do my own thing. I do my own thing. But you don't realize that every one of them was constantly leeching off of society for everything. Nobody is immune to that. And, uh, when, you know, that's the thing we got to realize, that every one of us is completely screwed, you know. A homeless person may see someone drive by and think, you know, what a punk, they didn't give me anything. Like, when I drive by, I feel guilty if I don't give somebody something or at least say hi. And then I think, well, they don't know that I'm in a borrowed truck because my tranny's out. I owe more money than I'm worth by far. They're probably better off financially than I am. I do have a roof over my head, but, you know, it's check to check like everyone else. And uh, I'm scraping to make ends meet and going to work every day, passing the same people. Uh, they have a routine. I have a routine leads me to wonder sometimes which ones of them can do something with themselves but uh, if they look like they're capable and they look like they could get out there and go to the temp service and find a job then I don't give them anything because you know, that's not uh, unless their circumstances are enough the ones that write these big long lists on a board as if you, as if you have time to read it it's like letters this big it's like 
I lost my job and, and you know, I had a dog and we got to stay out. Out of gas is a very common sign. Out of gas, just trying to get out of town, hoping people will say, oh yeah, get him out of our town. You'll see the same guy three days in a row. Just need ten bucks for gas. Ten bucks for gas. Or the ones that say, I need thirty bucks. Or we only need seven fifty more for a motel. And the same sign every day. Like, okay, you need seven fifty more for a motel. You know, and you do this every day. You know, maybe you should camp in a tent and save your money up to where you can invest in some weed and sell it and make some cash. I don't know. Do something, you know. But I have to realize not everyone's innovative like that. Like, you live to a certain standard, and you know you, you don't ever want to go below that. You know, I've had to lose a lot of the wage I made before, and that's fine. You know, I don't, I can deal with it. I'm, I'm making half of what I did a year ago, but less than half. But, uh, you know, I'm happy. It's fine. But if you go below a certain point, you know, it starts to get a little, and uh, especially bad when you, you know, get to poverty level, minimum wage, and, um, and below. And, uh. So money only brings happiness to a certain point. Uh, I think the amount is like fifty thousand a year, maybe a hundred thousand a year. I'm sure everything helps. It depends on the person. But um, anyway, so some thoughts on homelessness. I don't want to ramble on too much about other stuff. So namaste.